Hello guys, uh, welcome back to my channel, Maison African Motives, still working on uh, industrial electronics M2. In this platform, we shall be focusing on AC theory, uh, which is one of the most important part that we are supposed to understand in our syllabus. Um, so we are not going to waste much time, we're just going to focus on question number three from the question paper, which was written in January 2022. This is 2022, not 2021, but 2022. Um, we are given a circuit that we had a resistor, an inductor, and a capacitor. That's an RLC circuit. So there we are asked to calculate uh, the following 3.11, the impedance of the circuit. So whenever you are answering this type of a question, what you need is to compare in terms of the reactance that we have. In this case, we have got XL, which is 14 ohms, and uh, we have got XCC, which is 8 ohms. This is ohms, so which means that reactance, which is measured in, in uh, ohms, not inductance, not capacity, but capacitive reactance, inductive reactance. So comparing this, we can see that XL is greater than XC. This is the most important part to note. XL is greater than XC. So which means our circuit is going to be in favor of the inductance. The inductance is the one that is, uh, uh, we are going to keep in favor of. So the impedance, as we know from our formulas, these are the formulas that we have for impedance. If they uh, two uh, circuits, we have got uh, this one, we have got uh, XL minus XC. So it depends with which one. Uh, in this case, XL is greater than XC. So this is the one that we are going to use for the impedance. So not wasting much time, our Z representing the impedance on 3.11 is going to be equal to the square root of, so Z is equal to the square root of R squared plus XL minus XC because XL is greater than XC. So Z is equivalent to the square root of R squared. We've got the resistance of 10 ohms. So it's going to be 10 squared plus XL minus XC, which is 14 minus eight. So this one is direct 14 minus eight squared. Okay, so that's the impedance of the circuit, which is the total impedance of the circuit. So you're going to use our calculator for the square root of uh, 10 squared. So this is 10 squared plus subtract in bracket 14 minus six, uh, 14 minus eight, sorry, close that bracket. Yes, uh, we're going to obtain two square root of 34 or 11,6619. But if you had to round off to three decimal places, it's going to be six, two. So it's 11,6622 ohms. This is the impedance measured in ohms. Okay, then we move on to 2.12, the supply voltage. We know that once there is the impedance, the supply voltage, we uh, the supply voltage is going to be the total current plus that, but we do not have the total current, so we're going to work with the voltages. Okay, so in this case, we are going to work with voltages. We've got a VR, VL, and uh, VC, so our VT, which is the total voltage, is going to be the square root of VR squared, the voltage of the resistor, plus VL minus VC squared. So this is the phasor sum. Uh, whenever you're dealing with AC theory, you find the phasor sum, so that uh, VT is the phasor sum of the given voltages. So the first voltage VR is 150. So it's going to be VT is equal to the square root of 150 squared, uh, squared plus VL, which is 180 minus 90. So we've got 180 minus 90 squared. All right, so that part is just you and your calculator. We can actually simplify this direct uh, from our calculator, we've got uh, the square root of um, 150 squared plus in bracket 90, which is just, okay, 180 minus 90. Let's just do the proper way, the way that it is. Uh, we are going to obtain 174,928, but five is going to change eight into nine. So it is going to be 174 comma nine two nine volts. So this is our VT, which is the total voltage for the given circuit. So that was 3.12.
Uh, let's check the other part of the question. We are now asked to calculate the current in the circuit. So this is the total uh, current in the circuit. Remember that we have got the total voltage. So this is 3.13. Can even uh, list it down here. Uh, let's just use this page. Uh, that will be the total voltage over the total impedance. Okay. So this is 3.13. So 3.13, we need the total current. So total current, total voltage over the total impedance. Okay, so there we just divide the voltage that you got here. We got the total voltage of 174,929 over the total impedance, which is 11,662. Okay, so let's divide the two and see what you're going to have uh in this case uh we are going to divide the two all right so let me just try by almost to push this side okay like this 174,929 over uh 11,662 okay so that's it 11,9999 as you can see the 9 is going to change 10 10 is going to be 15 amps so this is going to be 15 amps that is the supply current of the circuit, the current that is uh, flowing in this resistor is in this circuit is 15 amps. That is the supply current. All right, so uh, it's very, very important that you note your working. Each and every stage has to be shown properly. Let's see, 3.14, the value of the inductor. All right, we want to find the value of the inductor, which is our L here. Take note, we are given XL. So what can we do from our XL? This is 3.13. Okay, so 3.14, no, not 3.14. Okay, we are given that our XL in this case, remember that our XL was uh, 14 ohms. Now we want to find the value of L. Uh, from our formula, we know that XL is equal to two pi FL. So you can make L to be the subject by dividing by two pi F four sides by two pi F four sides. So this can actually cancel. We have got the value of the inductor, which is going to be XL over two pi F, whereby XL, that's uh, our 14 ohms. So it's going to be 14 over two pi times the frequency of the circuit. Let's see, we have given here the frequency of the circuit, we've got 100 Hertz. That is the frequency. Remember frequency is measured in Hertz. So we are going to multiply it by 100 in this case. Okay, so that's it. We can have our inductance. Uh, I want us to see what is going to happen here. If we are to use our calculator, it's going to be 14 over 2 pi. Pi, you can use 3.142, or you can just use pi from your calculator as it is times 100. So you're going to obtain 0, 0,02, whatever that you have. So it depends with what you, how you want to write your answer. This was going to be 0, 0,02228. Uh, one is something like that. So we know that inductance is measured in Henry's or we can convert to milli Henry's by converting this, you just multiply. We know that milli Henry's, this milli here means times 10 to the power minus three. Okay. So for you to convert, sorry, uh, let me just change here. All right. So for you to have, Okay, so I'm writing on somewhere which is not possible. So let me write it here. Milli Henry's is the same as times 10 to the power minus three in Henry's. Okay, so for you to convert to milli Henry's, take note, we know that milli is 10 to the power minus three. You multiply by the opposite, not minus three, but you multiply by 10 to the power three for you to convert to milli Henry's. So this year, you just multiply by 10 to the power three, the opposite of minus three. Okay, so on your answer here, multiply by 10 to the exponent of three. Your answer is now in milli Henry's. So it's 22,28, six is going to change two into one into two. So it's going to be 22, uh, comma. Okay, so we are going to have uh, 22 comma 282 so this is 282 now your answer is in milli henry's so normally inductance is measured in milli henry's capacitance microfarads so make sure that conversion uh is maintained but uh, you can even write without milli henry's is fine but mostly leave your answer in milli henry's okay let's see the other part of the question 
uh, which is 3.15, we are now asked to calculate the capacitance, the value of the capacitor, which is C. So we need to find the value of C, remembering that we are given C. We are given XCC from this previous question. We have got XCC here our, from our capacitor. We have got XCC. So we can actually play around that XCC just like what we did uh, from the previous question. So this is 3.15. We know that our XCC uh, was 8 ohms. So And also the formula for XCC is going to be 1 over 2 pi fc so to find c we just make c the subject and c is going to be equal to one over two pi fxc so it's just a matter of substitution into the formula one over two pi times the frequency remember your frequency was 100 times xc which is eight okay so that's it uh that's our capacitance in this case um let's see what you're going to have uh capacitance so it's one over, that's one over two pi. So you're going to have one over two pi times 100 times eight, which is one comma nine, whatever that we have there, times 10 to the power minus four. So you've got one comma, let me write it down, one comma nine, eight, nine, four, three, whatever that we have, times 10 to the power minus four, this is measured in farads capacitance but your answer capacitance make sure that it's measured in microfarads micro means times 10 to the power minus 6 farads so for you to convert to microfarads you multiply by the opposite you are supposed to use 10 to the power minus 6 but the opposite of minus 6 is 10 to the power 6 so on your answer just multiply by 10 to the power of 6 you are now having your answer in microfarads so it's 198,943,9436 of which is going to be 4 so it's 198 198,944 so it is going to be 944 now it's in microfarads okay so that is uh, the conversion part we are now having your capacitance the other part is the phase angle in this case the phase angle so uh, this is actually an RLC circuit whereby we know that uh, it's actually being determined by inductance uh, and uh, the capacitance. So I want you to see where actually this is coming from, uh, from your phasor diagram, uh, because we need the phase angle with the capacitor. Okay, let me write it down. This is 3.16. We know that XL is greater than XCC. So we're supposed to have something of this nature on our diagram. This is what we're supposed to have. This is resistance whereby our resistance, remember it was 10 ohms. We have got our impedance here and uh, that impedance is Z. Our Z here, we got our Z. If you still remember, your Z was 11,662. That's your Z. So we've got 11,662. All right, so we've got uh, 11,662. And here we are going to use XL minus XC. Remember XL was 14, uh, that was 14 minus eight, which is going to give us six ohms. So that is what you have. So you can use any ratio because you want to calculate theta. So you can use any ratio, tan, sine, cos, whatever that you have. But if you are to use resistance, and impedance, this is adjacent, and that is hypotenuse. And uh, from our soccer tour, we all understand that we are going to use cos adjacent over hypotenuse. So we understand cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So to find theta, theta is equal to arc cos, the adjacent, which is the resistance, over the hypotenuse, which is z. So theta is arc cos. If you have to apply the uh, cos, we use R and Z, which is arc cos uh, R, which is the resistance, that's 10 over Z, which is 11,662. All right, so we can have the theta, which is the angle. So shift cos, that is arc cos 10 over 11,662. We can have uh, this value here, which is 30,964. But five can round off this four into five, so it's going to be 30. Comma nine, uh, comma six nine. Is this six nine or comma nine six 
0.965 degrees. Okay, so that, that is our theta, which is the phase angle. So whenever we are referring to the phase angle, we are referring to theta. Uh, that is uh, how we're supposed to have this uh, from what we have. So if you are to use uh, whatever, you can use the other combination, you must obtain the same or an answer that is familiar to that one. Draw the vector diagram using the voltages. Take note, we are told to use uh, the voltages uh, in this case. There I had a vector diagram, but that vector diagram, it was in terms of impedances. Now we want in terms of voltages. So we are just going to have the same thing. Okay, so this is 3.2. We are just going to have a similar diagram with this one that we have, but now we are going to use voltages in place of what? Instead of um, impedances. Okay, so this is 3.2. So that's our vector diagram. So we are going to have something of this nature. We know that VL is always on top from our, if you can forget this, we can use civic, uh, civil, sorry, uh, civil, like that. So in terms of uh, capacitor, in terms of capacitance, current leads voltage. In terms of inductance, voltage leads current. So in this case, we are referring to voltage. So this is our VL, this is our VC. So we are going to have something of this nature, something like this. Okay, so the angle that we obtained does not change 30 comma. This is the angle that we obtained 30 comma 965 degrees. And here we've got our VR, uh, here we've got our total voltage VT, and this is going to be VL minus VC. Okay, so that's it. We can even substitute with the values. Remember, sorry for that, uh, the values, we have them. So we can actually substitute with the values that we are. All right, sorry for that. Well, was recording everything on the screen. Okay, so that was it. The, we got, uh, the vector diagram for the given circuit. So that was actually six times three, max 18 max plus three, which is 21 from this question. So as you can see, guys, it's very, very important for you to understand AC theory, something that uh, uh, if you can have a lot of marks from this topic and also with the DC uh, theory. But uh, as you can see, these are easy questions. We, all we need is to know your formulas and how to apply the formulas. So anyways, that's it, guys, for Mason African Motives. Till we meet again.